Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. The Massachusetts Air National Guard member arrested after the leak of classified military documents online used his government computer to search for the word leak on the day last week when news reports revealed the improper disclosure of these documents. That information alleged in an eight page court affidavit for Jack Teixeira that was released a short time ago. The 21 year old appeared briefly in a federal courtroom in Boston earlier today where he was formally charged. Under the Espionage Act, he has been charged with unauthorized retention of classified and national defense information. Teixeira will remain in custody at least until a detention hearing next week, which is set for Wednesday. Court documents unsealed Friday also indicate that billing records for the social media platform Discord, along with interviews with another user, helped the FBI to identify their suspect. Mark Chukko is a former federal prosecutor and partner over at Dykema. He joins us now live to talk more about all of this. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Glad to be here. So first off, the court documents there revealing a lot of new information. Are you surprised overall with how much detail we got here about how authorities were able to track this guy down? Yeah, it's an impressive investigation by the FBI. I mean, the story came out by the New York Times just last week, and uh, they were racing against time to identify this person, working and sometimes in concert with the press to try to locate him. But uh, they did it in record speed. They were able to apprehend him without incident, and uh, so kudos to the FBI. And we do know now that the charge against him, we actually got a look at it specifically, and it's unauthorized retention of classified and national defense information. What does that mean in plain English? It basically means that um, if he has uh, unauthorized access to defense information and shares it with others who are not authorized to receive it, and uh, that information could harm the United States or benefit a foreign uh, country, uh, he can be found guilty of the, of the crime. D it does not require that the, uh, the documents be classified. It's a, it's a statute from back in 1917 that is oftentimes used in these kind of leak cases. And um, if they're able to show the government that he had reason to believe that uh, either the United States would be harmed or that a uh, foreign government um, would be benefited, uh, he could be subject to more extensive penalties than the 10 year uh, statutory maximum that he's looking at right now. Does it seem like this guy could stay in custody for a while? Because we do know that uh, he was told he does have to be detained until at least the detention hearing that is set for next Wednesday. Is it likely this guy is going to stay behind bars for even longer than that? I, I would expect that the government is going to move for his detention pre-trial up until the time of the uh, trial itself. And the reason I, I think that is that they're going to argue that he is a risk of flight. I mean, he's shown extreme recklessness with his use of this uh, highly classified information. And uh, he, he has been briefed um, in order to get his uh, clearance to look at this kind of uh, information and um, specifically sign documents saying that he would protect it, but he didn't. Uh, the fact that he um, has flouted those laws is going to be used by the government to say that uh, we can have no confidence that he's going to appear in court. So uh, right now he's just been temporarily detained, but I would fully expect that the government will move for his detention pretrial after that. And how fast does something like this actually go to trial? It's going to take some time. I mean, at this point, um, I have not fully looked at the charging documents, but from the reports, it indicates it's an eight-page affidavit, which would uh, suggest that it is a complaint and not an indictment. Um, we'll likely see another charging document coming out soon from a grand jury who will be convened and look at the totality of the evidence. And so I would expect to have a lot more charges in this case than we're seeing right now. Um, those charges could be stacked and he could be looking at a lot of time. So there's going to be, uh, if he decides uh, to challenge this, uh, just looking at the case of uh, Chelsea Manning, uh, it took three years from the time of her initial charges until she went to trial. Um, uh, by uh, comparison, other defendants in these kind of cases that have pled guilty um, have oftentimes seen a one-year gap between 
the time of their charge and the uh, the guilty plea. So I think we're at least looking at six months to a year and perhaps three years if he uh, challenges this. It's it's very difficult in these kind of cases involving classified information. Uh, you have to do a number of different types of things, including uh, the government will have to declassify some of the documents so that they could be made available for court. They're going to have to provide uh, clearance uh, for classified information with court uh, staff and defense attorneys and that's a very complicated endeavor, much more unusual than a normal criminal procedure. And just based on your experience as a former federal prosecutor there, do you think we're ever going to know the full scope of the documents and what they contained? Well, it, it seems like uh, the both the combination of the press and the government is uh, really highlighting things very quickly. So I, I think we're going to have a pretty good sense of the at least the number of documents that were released. Um, as to how far they reached, I don't think we will know that. They, they could oftentimes travel through the dark web uh, to Eastern Europe and to other countries, and we'll never really have a lot of uh, intelligence on that. But, uh, you know, just from uh, reporting that has been done uh, from some of the other people in this, uh, this online chat gaming room that he was part of, uh, it sounds like this uh, information that he was disseminating had been going on for a long time. So I think we're looking at just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, this is likely to go on, I would imagine, for a while. So as you mentioned, you know, just kind of the tip of the iceberg as we do work to get, you know, the latest information here. How does this all compare to uh, previous leaks that we talked about? You mentioned uh, Manning as well as Snowden. How does this compare to that? Well, just in terms of sheer scale, um, it likely does not um, compare to the Chelsea Manning case. As I recall, uh, she released um, up to 700,000 records. Um, we don't know the full scope of what he has released, but I would be surprised if it was that many. Um, but by the same token, uh, this case is different because of the recency, recency of the, the records that were revealed. In the case of Chelsea Manning, some of it was historic, as was uh, Edward so Snowden, um, who revealed information about our surveillance activities. Um, here, these are um, very fresh documents that reveal operational plans for war in uh, Ukraine, uh, that talk about uh, supplies of munitions, uh, locations, and strategy. Um, and it is uh, stuff that certainly could harm Ukrainian battle operations that could assist uh, the Russians who are now probably furiously looking over these records at the same pace as we are to understand the sources and methods of the United States uh, collection of intelligence. And I'm not sure if you can speak to this here, but why exactly would this be a federal matter and not a court martial situation? Well, that's a good question. And there is a possibility that it could be a court martial as well. Um, but certainly the, uh, the civilian courts have jurisdiction on a case like this and uh, the Department of Justice and the FBI is fully capable of investigating this. And so um, this, unlike a case of some foreign adversaries, uh, is not complicated. This is something that um, courts uh, are, are used to doing all the time. And so um, I think that the Department of Justice had waited and thinks that it was fully appropriate to charge it in this manner. And we talked about, of course, cases of this magnitude, so to speak. Uh, Snowden obviously knew what he was doing. He claimed moral grounds for what he did. Is there any possible justification for what happened in this case? Do we think that it's possible that he was trying to show off to his friends there or if he really wanted to be somebody like Edward Snowden? Is it too early to tell? I think it's too early to tell. I mean, there has been a lot of uh, information that is being re been revealed just in the past day from some of these other online gamers that suggested that um, Mr. Teixeira was attention seeking, that uh, he was trying to advise his uh, younger cadre of uh, gamers uh, about the world affairs and was not getting their attention and so decided to leak actual documents to show that, in fact, he really did have this kind of information. and so. I mean, that, that goes to the question of um, why would a, um, an airman um, of this level of experience um, have access to these kind of records given his uh, lack of maturity and lack of understanding of the significance of what he was doing. All right, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time here to join us. Anything else that you want to add about all of this before I let you go? 
No, it's a, an astonishing case, and um, it's there's going to be damage assessments, congressional inquiries, um, probably um, OIG uh, inspector general investigations. Uh, we're we're going to hear a lot about this over the next six months. All right. Thank you again for taking the time to join us here. You're welcome.